You've just recorded, edited, and published your latest podcast episode for the world to hear. And now you need to create a promotional social media post, yet your creative juices aren't flowing as much as you'd like them to. In this short series, I'll be showing you how you can go from podcast audio to social media post in just a few seconds with Azure OpenAI, .NET, and the Power Platform. In the previous video, we laid the foundation by diving into the world of Azure OpenAI service. We introduced the service, described the models, and guided you through creating deployments, setting the stage for seamless AI integration. In this video, we'll be bridging the gap by creating a .NET API using the .NET Azure OpenAI SDK and creating a custom connector from within Visual Studio. Let's get into it. So with all our AI deployments ready for use, let's go ahead and create some local environment variables. And to do that, we need to open up our command prompt that we have here. And we're gonna be running some commands to save those local environment variables. The first one will be to set the open AI key for the West Europe resource. We'll just enter that and I'll say the specified value was saved and we'll do that for the rest of our variables as well. And as we can see, we've set all five local variables, two for the West Europe region, two for the Sweden central region, and then we have one for the Bing search key as well. Once we've set those, we'll go ahead and open up Visual Studio. And inside of Visual Studio, we'll create a brand new project. We'll look for the .NET Core Web API project template. Then we'll go to next. We'll name this project Podcast App API and leave everything as is. We'll go to next. Make sure that we are on the latest version of .NET, .NET 8.0. Leave the authentication type as is configure for HTTPS and enable open API support. And then we'll click on create. And once the project has been created, we'll open up the solution explorer and right click on the podcast app API project and then select open in terminal. In the terminal window, we will then go ahead and run the following command, which is to add the openai.net SDK to this project so we're able to connect to our Azure deployments. Let's go ahead and click enter. And once that is complete, we'll go ahead and run a second command that will install the newtonsoft.json package. Once those two packages have been created, we'll go ahead and create the podcast copilot class. So let's go into our solution explorer We'll add a new class by right clicking on the project name, selecting add, and then going to class. And we'll name that podcast copilot. Let's click on add and wait for that to load up. And once that has loaded up, let's go ahead and add some code. First, we will be adding the following using statements to the top of the podcast copilot class. And then inside the podcast copilot class, we will then add the following code. The following code gets references from the environment variables that we created earlier on. This allows us to securely use our open AI deployment endpoints and keys so that we are able to connect to those Azure open AI models within this application. So as we can see here, we initialize those keys and endpoints as well as the Bing search key. And then we create two instances of the open AI client. The first instance references the West Europe region and the second instance references the Sweden central region, giving us access to the Whisper and GPT as well as the DALI models respectively. Let's go ahead and add more code underneath. And what we'll do is we'll add the code for getting the audio transcription of the podcast. Once we get that transcript, the next step here is to then extract the guest name from that transcription. As we can see, it's taking in the transcription as a a parameter and then it's using the GPT 3.5 model to extract the guest name. 
then the next part is to then get the guest bio from Bing. So what this does, once we have the guest name from the method above, it will then search Bing using the, the Bing search key that we created earlier on. And we will extract the very first bio from the very first result that pops up on Bing. So now with the transcription, as well as the guest name and the guest bio, we can sort of generate our first piece of content, which is the actual social media blurb. So let's go ahead and add that in now. And again, this is all from the GitHub repo that I linked earlier on. For this method, it accepts the transcription as well as the bio. And then, like I said, it creates our social media blurb. And then once that's returned, we can then go ahead and generate a Dolly prompt from that blurb with this method over here. The obvious question here would be, why are we using GPT to generate a prompt? And that is simple because the idea is that every single time you use this process, the podcast will be different. So it's important to create an image that is relevant to that specific podcast as well as to the social media blurb, which is why for this method, it takes in the social blurb as an input and then it creates a Dolly prompt based on that social media blurb. And then of course, once we have the blurb, we can then go ahead and add the method that generates the social media image with Dolly. Once we have the prompt, it goes ahead and appends high quality digital art to whatever prompt it had created for us. You know, we can set things like the image size, the style, the quality. And then once we have all of those passed through to our open AI clients, we can then and return that URL as a string for us to use in whatever way we see fit. So with those six methods, that sort of ends the podcast copilot class, but we still need to create the actual social media post to pass it through our API. So for that, we're going to create a second class called social media post. We'll go ahead and go to solution explorer. We'll right click, go to add and then select class. Let's name that class social media post. We'll click on add. And for this, we will add two properties, image URL and blurb, because when we send this post back out to the user, the user is only interested in two things, the social media blurb to actually post on social media, as well as the link to the image that they can post to accompany that social media blurb. So once we have this class in place, we can now add one more method to the podcast copilot class to return the social media post object. So let's go to podcast copilot class and right underneath this final method, we can then add a method that calls each and every one of the methods we created previously, getting the transcription, the guest name, the guest bio, the blurb, the Dolly prompt, as well as the image. And then once we have those two generated pieces of content, we can then pass them into a brand new social media post object, and then finally return that object to the user. Let's go ahead and save that. And with everything configured, we can move on to updating the program.cs file to implement this API. So again, we'll open up Solution Explorer, We'll go to program.cs and there's some template code here. This is all added when you create a brand new .NET web API file. We'll go ahead and delete everything. And from the GitHub repo, we'll just go ahead and add this set of um, code. And then you'll see there's a comment here that says implement minimal APIs. And that is where we will be implementing the API that we need for this whole process to work. Let's go ahead and copy that method in. So I'll just paste that. And as you can see here, we are calling 
the generate social media post method that we just created inside of the podcast copilot class, right? We don't need to call each and every method that we made. We just need the method that generates that post from the podcast URL. With that implemented, let's go ahead and test that this API works as expected. So I'll go ahead and run this. And once the API has loaded in the browser, we can go ahead and test the endpoints. We can go ahead and just click that, click on try it out, and then we'll paste in the podcast URL. This is the URL of the blob storage file that we save in lab one. So with that, we can go ahead and execute. And then after a few seconds, we should see the completed social media post object with an image URL as well as a social media blurb. With it now complete, we can see in the response body that we do indeed have an image URL and a social media blurb as well. Let's go ahead and see what this image looks like. So I'll just go ahead and highlight that. And we should see an image which sort of corresponds with the theme of the podcast and the guest speaker's background. But now let's head back to Visual Studio. Because we now know that the API is working and it's working well, we can go ahead and turn this API into a custom connector so that we can use it inside of the Power Platform. So in our Solution Explorer, we'll go ahead and right click on Connected Services. We'll go to Add, and then we'll choose Microsoft Power Platform. And then here we can configure the following settings to connect to the Power Platform, making sure that we are logged in with the same account that we use for the Power Platform. So first things first, we need to make sure that we select the correct environment we want this connector to be in. And then after that, we can go ahead and select the appropriate solution. And of course, we can go ahead and choose a custom connector. You can choose an existing one to publish to, or you can go ahead and create a brand new one. I'll leave it as podcast copilot underscore connector. And then we will create a public dev tunnel. So let's go ahead and click on the plus sign. Let's name the tunnel Copilot Tunnel. And we'll click on OK. And then we'll click Next. And then we'll click on Finish. So that will then do two things. It, it will create the connector inside of the Power Platform, but it's also creating that dev tunnel, that last property that we configured. It allows us to expose this API through a public endpoint so that we are able to consume it inside of the Power Platform. Because as of now, when I run the API, it's only local to my machine and no one else can use it. So if you want to use the same API inside of the Power Platform, where the Power Platform is a public cloud service, we can configure a dev tunnel to do just that. So once it's done, We'll go ahead and click close. We'll run this app once again. And because we have configured this dev tunnel for the first time, it'll ask us if we want to connect to it. We'll click on continue. And once we've clicked on that, it will then load the same screen that we're used to. With the small change, if we look at the URL, it is no longer localhost. It is now the link to that dev tunnel, which again, exposes this API to the public. So with that configured, we've come to the end of part two. And that's it. We've created our .NET API, we've tested it, and we've, we went ahead and creating a custom connector from inside of Visual Studio, where we will be able to use our API inside of the Power Platform and products like Power Apps and Copilot Studio. As always, everything I'm going through is documented step by step on GitHub at aka.ms forward slash power podcast copilots. So you can follow along with me there as well.
See you in the third and final video where I'll be bringing everything together by leveraging the custom connector we've just built and using that inside of Power Apps and Copilot Studio. See you then.